Yep, sit back, relax, and get ready to enjoy another awesome video by Captain Franklin Air. Please subscribe, like, and share with all your friends and all the people you hate too. So for today's find, we're looking at damage to a cord swim platform. You can see here, you've got cracks all along this area here. And if you keep looking around, you'll see various and assorted other cracks, like right here, cracking all along here, around here. So these are indications that the uh, swim platform uh, is weak, uh, probably due to delamination of the coring and needs to be inspected and repaired. Okay, so for today's find, we got a number of things going on with this uh, fire extinguisher. One, uh, the bracket is broken. You can see right here, it is broken. Uh, and number two, the pull pin is missing. So there's no pull pin on this thing to keep it from discharging. And funny, I should mention that. The third thing, nail in the coffin, the unit is discharged. So this unit is discharged, the bracket's broken. So it uh, needs to be replaced. Okay, for today's find, so we're inspecting these life jackets. Let's open them up. And what do we got here? Propane canister. These should not be, of course, stored inside the boat. They should be stored outside so that if they leak, then it would drain directly overboard. You can store them in a mesh bag on the rail or, or some other type of holder that drains overboard, but they should not be stored in here. Wait, it gets better. As we look in here, what do we see stored with the propane? Why, of course, a flare. So uh, double, double, double trouble here. So the propane, of course, should not be stored in here and the flare should definitely not be stored in here with it, of course, even worse. So here's a good reason why you always want to have the boat hauled and cleaned before conducting your sea trial. Uh, as you can imagine, all this growth on the boat would uh, affect the boat's speed and handling. The purpose of the sea trial, of course, is to make sure it accurately reflects uh, the boat's, uh, you know, handling and speed and such. That's why you would conduct a hull out before you do the sea trial. So for today's find, we're looking at uh, deteriorated exhaust hose for a diesel engine and a mid-sized sailboat. A quick shine of the light here, and you can see the cracks and deterioration here. But let's trace it a little further back. We're going to see how it looks at other sections as well. Looking at the manufacturer date, 2007, that means this hose is uh, 16 years old. So here we're looking at the hose and the uh, there's a compartment that is aft of the aft stateroom and we've opened it up. An area that is not quite as easily accessible and visible, uh, but you can see here it uh, is even worse than it is up uh, at the engine. And we're gonna take one final look back in the steerage and this is where the tale is really told, right? The deterioration is even more noticeable and worse. And also the wire and reinforcing in the hose is corroded, which is where this run and rust is coming from. All signs that this exhaust hose needs to be replaced immediately. So for today's find, here's something I often see with regards to water heaters. Uh, you see this overpressure relief valve right here. Uh, this should be plumbed into the bilge of the boat. And the reason is, is if it pops open due to overpressurization or overheating, uh, then the water, the scalding water, would just go down into the bilge rather than spray out all the equipment around the water heater or possibly somebody around in that area. So you always want to have this valve plumbed either overboard into a sump or into the bilge. So here we're checking out some uh, through holes below the water line. Everything looks okay so far, but uh, check out the hose clamps. The hose clamps are in place, but they are not tightened. So what's happened here is the owner has uh, commissioned the boat for spring launch. He's put them in place, put the hoses in place in the hose clamps, and then he launched the boat, but he forgot to tighten the hose clamps. So that's what we got going on here. Another issue with this installation, you've got strainers or, you know, the raw water strainers coming from the seacock here. Uh, these are composite units and they are screwed directly onto a bronze uh, seacock. You don't want to have a composite fitting screwed onto a bronze fitting or seacock because they have different expansion and contraction ratios and the composite fitting can crack. This is especially important with through holes below the water line. So here's a problem I commonly see. Um, you've got your gaskets here for this uh, access plate above your fuel tank. 
You want to keep these things clean so that it will prevent water from dripping down onto your fuel tank and causing corrosion. So as part of your maintenance uh, process, your routine maintenance schedule, you should clean these gaskets regularly to make sure that they're sealing properly and keeping water out. So for today's find, we got to do a little bit of detective work. We see a lot of running rust here. Where is all this rust coming from? Remember, rust and running rust, leaks, stains, that's your boat's way of telling you something's going on. Well, the storage locker above this bilge where the rust is contains the air conditioning unit. And the air conditioning unit has a drip tray or condensation tray to retain the condensation. And this has rusted through. And there's a hole right there where it's rusted through. And that's where the rust and stains are coming from, through the rusted uh, drip tray and into the bilge. So for today's find, we're inspecting the hull of this mid-sized power boat. Everything looks pretty good, but hold on, what's this? As we crawl under, we can see this right here, keel damage, damage to the fiberglass. Uh, and it's pretty deep too. And how has this happened? Uh, the trailer is not adjusted properly and the owner has been rubbing up on the frame there when he loads and unloads the boat. So for today's find, we're looking at the uh, fish box macerator on a mid-sized fishing boat. Uh, a quick shine of the light shows that the hose has got splits in it. You can see that it's cracked and badly deteriorated, uh, which means this hose is in need of immediate replacement, particularly as it's connected to a discharge through hull located below the waterline. One important check when you're inspecting your EPIRBs, which you should do at least uh, twice a year, check out the battery expiration date. If it is expired, as this one here is, then the unit needs to be returned to a authorized service center for uh, inspection and battery replacement. So for today's find, we're looking at bilge pumps. Uh, you can see that the discharge hose for this bilge pump is badly deteriorated, and a quick look at the other one shows that it is deteriorated as well. Both of these discharge hoses are in need of replacement. So when you test and inspect your bilge pumps, which you should be doing at least twice a year, Take a look at the hose as well to make sure there's no deterioration and that it has uh, hose clamps installed. Another tip, uh, when you test your bilge pump systems, uh, don't just turn them on and listen to motor noise uh, with electric bilge pumps. Uh, what you want to do is introduce some water into the bilge and make sure that it actually pumps the water overboard. Take a fresh water hose, uh, run some water in there, and that also lets you uh, verify that the automatic float switches, if you have any installed, operate properly as well. Your emergency kill switch is an important safety feature. The lanyard here should be attached to your person when you operate the vessel. Uh, that's so that if you get thrown from the helm, uh, the switch would uh, pop off and it would kill the engines uh, to prevent the boat from uh, continuing on. You should test the operation of your kill switch at least annually. So for today's find, um, we're looking at a mid-sized catamaran <clears throat> and you can see here this running rust uh, this is due to corrosion here at the mounting harbor for this uh, stainless steel exhaust uh, outlet so as we've discussed before in a number of videos running rust leaks stains this is your boat's way of telling you something's going on and typically that something's not going to be good so the recommendation here, of course, would be to pull this and inspect it and see what's uh, what's going on. So for today's find, we're looking at the anchor and road on a mid-sized powerboat. The first thing we spot here is that the road, the uh, rope road, is tied directly to the shackle of the anchor chain. Ideally, this would uh, be attached uh, using a thimble or something to prevent chafe damage, and it would be properly spliced rather than using all these knots. Next up, a quick look at the screw pins for the shackles, and they are not moused uh, or secured to prevent them from unscrewing. They should be moused with stainless steel wire. And finally, taking a look at the anchor shank itself, it's bent. You can see right here it's uh, experienced some side loading and it is bent. So a lot of stuff going on with this anchoring system that needs to be addressed. So today we're looking at impact damage uh, to the side of a uh, mid-sized sailboat. The brownish material you see shows the, uh, the shape of the damage, and this was applied as an emergency patch to keep the boat afloat. Uh, we take a look on the inside, and you can see the, the impact area was at the navigation station, 
and you can see damage to the hull here, uh, look into the inside. And you can see that the nav stay has actually shifted about four or five inches inboard. So we're gonna take a look at the bulkhead or the partial bulkhead aft of the navigation station. Take a look in here and you can see that it's also, the bulkhead is cracked and damaged as well. It's kind of hard to see, but right there it is. When you have damage to the hull, impact damage, you have to look everywhere to see what was affected. Uh, another look right here beneath the navigation station, you can see just how far it's shifted inboard. Due so for today's fun, we're looking at the uh, battery banks. This is a start battery for an engine uh, on a uh, mid-sized sailboat. And this is a house bank. Well, so you have the battery, which is in a box, which is good. Uh, but what you want is the, uh, the lid is not strapped down onto it. The lid is what protects the positive terminal here from accidental shorting. So if you have the box, you want to have the lid on there as well. Not just the battery being secured in the box without the lid on it. If you had this type of insulation and you didn't have a lid, you would have to put a protective covering on this uh, positive terminal to prevent accidental shorting. Okay, so for today's find, we're checking out a magnetic compass. And I have a little uh, deal that I use to test. I've got a flashlight that has a magnet on it. And that magnet is very good for checking the compass movement. So the problem with this compass is, okay, we're moving the compass. You'll notice that it is not swinging back to the, the accurate or normal position it should be in. This should always go back, of course, like a compass is, you know, and, and point to the correct uh, direction. And this one just is not doing it. So, of course, the recommendation here is to have the compass inspected to see what's going on with it. And you should also have a... So, for today's find, we have a, a European-built boat. And it's got a 230-volt, uh, a 16-amp uh, system here. Um, wired in electro, your AC electrical system. But they've partially disassembled this because they wanted to just run regular uh, 110 one, or 120. So they've just put in a, a plug here or they can just plug in a, a drop cord and stuff. Of course, this is the, you know, the, uh, the half, uh, well, I won't say what it is, but it's just the way that is not the correct way to wire it. So uh, the recommendation here, of course, would be to install the proper plug to provide uh, power to the vessel. Now, the problem with some of these European boats, some of the equipment, uh, Let's say if it was a water heater, for example, would not operate properly on 115 if it's designed for, you know, 230. So anyway, that's something to consider.